give an example. Cryptocurrency guys, by the way, part of the reason why I'm quote controversial is because I tell you the truth. I've got fuck you money. I've been retired for 20 fucking years. I will do what I want, you know? So I'm, what I want to do is tell the truth. Bitcoin was supposed to be the hedge against the stock market. Decorrelated asset. Okay, decorrelated asset. So that means they move in price differently. Yeah, that's what that means. Okay, well, COVID comes along. What happens? Stock market drops 20%. All right, what's Bitcoin do? Drops 65% in two weeks. Oh, shit. What happened to the decorrelated? All gone. All gone. You got to learn. You got to learn from reality. So everyone that was begging for a stock market crash to drive Bitcoin up. Oops. Oops. Oh, and then what happens? The stock market recovers and makes new all-time highs. So what does Bitcoin do? Recovers more. So it's a risk-on asset that, that because it has a lower liquidity pool, amplifies the movements of the legacy markets. So if the stock market goes up, Bitcoin goes up more, Ethereum goes up more, Hex goes up more because they're thinner markets. So the S&P 500 is the thickest order books. It takes the most energy to move, so it moves up the slowest. Bitcoin moves up with it, but it moves farther because the order books are thinner. Ethereum moves up with that, but it goes farther because the order books are thinner. Hex goes up with those, but its order books are thinner, so it goes farther, right? And you end up with these, these amplified pseudo leverage positions that amplify the volatility of a core thing because they're all interchangeable with each other and they're all tied together by the liquidity in their order books. And then what you do is you have, you do have some choosing of winners and losers. So for instance, the gains that you'll get on something that's less than a year old are likely to outperform the gains on something that's five years old in general because it's, it's easier to exponentially grow the number of users. It's easier to exponentially grow the amount of money that's invested. But even Bitcoin, if you look at its chart, it did this and then started to teal, tilt over and still doing amazing things, but you can see that it's getting heavier. It's, it's pulling over like a flower. That's what it looks like on the exponential chart. So, you know, if you're a chartist and a technical analyst like I am, you care about the chart, you care about the price, there's nothing more important than the price. People talk about, oh, I'm in it for the technology. Nobody is in this for the technology. Everybody is in it to get rich, and that's totally fine because that's what everyone is in every other thing they own for, right? Even houses became a method to get rich. Even houses, the things you live in, were turned into a, a roulette wheel in betting with credit default swaps and, you know, uh, the pooling of uh, mortgage-backed asset, mortgage-backed securities. Like, in a world where everyone's printing free money, everything is being turned into a game to make more money. Everything. So which thing is going to go up the most? Crypto. Because it has. It's proven. Like there's nothing. You are not going to find anything that outperforms crypto ever as long as you live. Ever. You, Hex did 263x this year, not including the interest. It's probably 400x with the interest. And if you're a long staker, it's even more. Because that guy's doing like 30, 40% interest a year. 50% last time I looked. It's insane. You can't do that anywhere else at all. And you've got regulatory arbitrage. Like if you want to play games and, you know, defer income and things like that, you got options in crypto. You don't have other places. <clears throat>